This episode of the Golf Gambling Podcast from the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer betting social platform that's based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com, that's K-U-T-T.com. Use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their pick em game for a chance to win 100x in NBA, NHL, college hoops, golf, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN for a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. All right, my friends, another week on the PGA Tour and another uh, very stern test. This is a this is a very fun, I guess, five week stretch we had before we lead up to the majors. Like, I know some people hate the Florida swing, but the Florida swing is good golf. Like, these are three and a half golf courses that are tough. Like, it's, it's, we're 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 done with these stupid birdie fests that we see in early January and like late after the after the major season. From Florida on to, I guess you could say Houston now because the new schedule, we get some good golf courses where it's not minus 27 winning the golf tournament uh, week in, week out. So, yeah, I'm really excited for this week. I know we have a massive gap in DFS pricing, a massive gap in the uh, uh, betting odds with Scotty Scheffler as a plus 300 favorite, but... There's definitely some strategy that's going to go into this week in DFS and I guess in betting too, but more DFS. This is a really good DFS week, in my opinion. Uh, quickly, we'll touch on the uh, the Valspar Championship. Obviously, if you watched my uh, weekend shows, I had a Keith Mitchell 54-1 to ticket that went up in flames quicker than it could have ever went up in, up in flames. But honestly, after losing Xander Shoffley the week before and now Keith Mitchell, I, they both hurt, but I would rather lose with Keith Mitchell than I did lose with Xander Schauffele because Xander, like I maybe it was just because it was a big event and it was Xander fucking Schauffele, but like that one stung. Whereas Keith, like that first duck hook on number on number one, I was this is over. This was over. I was no chance he was going to buck up after he had those lefts. He hit like three fairways all day. Was not playing as good golf as he showed the first three rounds. I know he got lucky on Saturday with the hole out and the the four under in the snake pit. Uh, that's neither here nor there. That's in the past. And Keith let us down. Keith truthfully let us down. But yeah, on to, to I, I gotta say something about Peter Malnati though. Props to Peter Malnati. That that shot on 17 he hit, long par three, high draw, posing after it, hits it to six feet. We haven't seen guts like that this year, besides someone named Scotty Scheffler. Peter fucking Malnati, 400 to one, stepping up. Getting the league on the be- leading the back nine, hanging on to it. He missed like one putt on par five, 15. No, par, par five, 14. He missed that six footer for birdie. And I was like, all right, Peter's going to uh, lose it here. Makes par on 15, 16. What a drive he hit. He hit a 30 yard cut, p- low flighted, absolutely gorgeous to have the balls to hit that shot on one on the hardest hole in the course, 16. Water right, trees left. Middle of the fairway. I know he got the drop, and he, he was – no other golfer would be like, wow, this is a great break. I, I have to make sure I'm doing this correct because this is an amazing break I got. No other golfer would show that emotion in the moment. No golfer would say like, yeah, this is clearly amazing because that's a, a three-and-a-half three footer for par versus probably would have been a 10-plus footer for par if he didn't get to drop it in the first cut. I, I'm not – I mean, I know I had a – if I had a Cam Young ticket, it probably would have been different. I probably would have been more upset, but like – you get good breaks, you get bad breaks. It's the rules that 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 same thing happens every single day of that tournament. We just don't see it because the cameras aren't on it. Like that, that's just how it is. It's golf. Golf is a very wonky game, but no one says it's not. Like you're gonna get a drop from that, but you can't drop it if you're in the middle of the worst of it ever in the fairway. No, I'm not complaining. It just is what it is, and it was just funny to see Pete Monati uh, talk, go through it, and did what he did. All right, Houston Open. Memorial Park, a very stern golf course. You're going to need the full bag working, but more importantly, you're going to need the driver working. Anytime you get a golf course where Jason Kokrak, Tony Finau wins, Scotty Scheffler's in the mix, you know you got to be driving it both long and straight. So that's what we got here. If you're a little bit wide off the tee or you're short off the tee, you're fucked because you're going to be playing out of this thick rough and you're not going to be able to control it into these greens with uh, five iron. So 
it's different if you're hitting wedges out of the rough. You're not going to be able to hit five irons out of the rough. Uh, so, yeah, you got to be hitting the fairways. Total driving is the biggest key stat this week. And that's the reason why Scotty Scheffler, Wyndham Clark, Sahit Tagala, and Will Zalatoris are the 10K range, which I will pull up my screen and share you the uh, DraftKings board. Um, yeah, Scotty is 13K. Honestly, I'm going to say it right now. I don't think he is expensive enough, truthfully, because I had a lineup last week where it was Justin Thomas, whatever. Justin Thomas, Akshay Batia, Justin Thomas shot infinity over the weekend, still made the cut. And then the rest of the six, the rest of the uh, players, so it was JT, Akshay, and then f- four players under 6K, and that cashed. With the long shots in the PGA Tour now, you can build Scotty. A, a, a 7K guy and four guys 6K plus and have a 6 to 6 lineup with his pricing down to 5K. So truthfully, I don't think Scotty is priced highly enough. He could easily be 14-3 and make sense, truthfully, because you can't script it better for a 3 peat. Wins API, wins the players. Now he heads to a course that fits him perfectly and it is a shit field. He could be playing horrendous golf right now, and he would still make so much sense for this venue. Like, truthfully, it cannot be scripted perfectly for Scotty Scheffler to win in three straight starts. And I know he's $2,100, high, $2,100 more than anyone else on the slate, but I think he's a good good play. Will he be 37% owned? Maybe, but then that's a different story where it's a little bit too early in the week to really nail that. But if he's like, if people are scared of that 13 13 and he's 28%, which I'm not really sure that will be the case. I think you got to play Scotty, truthfully. Now, Wyndham, he is extremely dialed, finished 16th here last year. Just like, it's, it's crazy to see it. Like, Scotty finishes 1 1, Wyndham finishes 2 2. And Wyndham is very in the moment where, like, he's Scotty Scheffler's the parameter. I base what I'm doing around Scotty Scheffler. And yeah, it's hard to say that Wyndham is not going to play well here, but, um, you're not going to be able to play both of these guys. And if you, I don't, truthfully, what I'm saying is I don't think the gap between Wyndham and Scotty is enough. Like I'm going with Scotty, truthfully. I know Wyndham's a lot cheaper. You can build, I guess, a little bit better lineups, but you can have success playing four guys in the 6K range. And Peter fucking Malnati won the PGA Tour last week. Like I shouldn't have to even say that. But yeah, Wyndham Clark, 10 9, clearly makes sense. He's a great driver of the golf ball, but I don't think the gap is high enough to play him at 10-9 if you're, rather than just going to Scotty Scheffler. Sahith and Will Z. I do think Sahith is going to be the chalky guy out of these two, which is crazy to think about. He's finished 6th at API, ninth at the players, 5th at Phoenix. He hasn't missed a cut in a long-ass time, finished 22nd here last time. The thing with Sahith is he's driving the ball almost too well. Knowing Sahith the last three years, he's always a very wide driver of the golf ball, but he'll dial it in for like two to three weeks at a time. He's on a bit of a run right now where he's driving the ball so well, and I just can't trust him at $10,000, 300 with some chalk to drive it straight. That's all I'm saying. If he is, the success will be there. I, like I always say, if you watch me, Sahith's success is solely reliant on his driving. If he's unless the golf course allows you to drive it wonky, like in Napa, you could drive it anywhere you want at Augusta. You could drive it anywhere you want at Kapalua. You could drive it anywhere you want easy success for Scythe, but on golf courses where you got to drive it straight, the players, you got to drive it straight. And he did finish in the top 10. Like I always say, the success with Sahith will come with the driver 10,300 chalk. I think we're just due for some regression with the driver. So I will be taking a back seat to Sahith this week. Will Z, great bounce back spot. I think he's underpriced at 10,100. He could eat, he could be the probably, I don't want to say you could price him ahead of Wyndham. Probably should be a price ahead of Sahith. Miscut at the players after the fourth place at the API and the second place at the Genesis. Look, this is a great bounce back spot. This was not a, it wasn't a horrendous course fit, but it's not the best spot for Will Zalatoris. This is a much better spot for Will Zalatoris, even though he's never played here. Long and trade off the tee, great middle of long iron player, difficult conditions. That screams Will Zalatoris. And obviously, you never want to miss the cut, but Sawgrass is an extremely volatile, volatile course. I will never fault the golfer for missing the cut at uh, at the uh, at CBC Sawgrass. So I think Will Zalatoris is a great click at 10-1. But I don't. You, you probably can't go 
two guys in this range. It's Scotty Scheffler. If you don't want to go to Scotty Scheffler, I think the answer is Will Zaltor. So let's move on down to this 9K range. Before I get into this 9K range, really quickly, let me tell you about Cut. Peer-to-peer social betting, betting platform that's U.S.-based, available in 40 states. It's a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends or other users on sports, politics, pop culture, with anything you want. You can create your own bets. Cut offers lower VIG. They're like a middleman. They handle the payment side of things, so you never have to chase anyone down for money. Group chats, betting leaderboards, head-to-head history, user profiles, groups, uh, cash back every single time you play against your friends and other users. Download Cut today in the App Store or Cut.com, K-U-T-T, promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. And Underdog Fantasy, uh, easiest place to f- play fantasy sports. You guys are seeing Underdog on Twitter all the time. I guarantee it. Pick them. You uh, Pick your favorite players. We'll have a higher or lower on this prop, on this score. What any Whatever you want to do, they have golf, NBA, NFL, every single sport. Pick between two and five players to build a pick em entry. You can also play rivals, which is you pit two players up against each other. For example, who will have more yards, who will score more points, who will make more birdies. Um, yeah, if you follow me on Twitter, um, I'm releasing underdog picks, usually one or two a week. Last week with the weather, I didn't do it because it was just so wonky. But uh, use promo code SGPN. First deposit doubled up to $100. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the App Store. App Store. Don't forget, code SGPN. Must be 18 plus in a, and be in a state where underdog fantasy op- operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play, call 1-800-522-4700 or visit ncpgambling.org. Okay, 9K range. And we get Uncle Tone at 9,900 down to Tom Hoagie at 9K flat. Tony Finau, like you play him at Tony Finau golf courses, and this is surely a Tony Finau golf course. I'm willing to forgive him from the missed cut at the Valspar. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't great. It really wasn't great. But outside of that Valspar, he's been hitting the ball truthfully as great as he's hit it in his career. The putter is a problem, but on a golf course where you don't have to make a jillion putts, I'm down for Tony Finau. Obviously, he won here last year. A guy I do like, 9,700 Siwoo Kim. But Siwoo Kim is... You're playing, you're buying Siwoo at like an absolute max in the pricing, which is never really a great thing because just as easily as he can make the cut and finish T5, he can flame out and miss the cut. That's just Siwoo Kim, but he is on a ball striking mission right now. He is gaining strokes T to green like no one's business, and he gained strokes in every single category last year for the first time since the last time he was in Texas at, and Dallas at the Byron Nelson. He gained strokes across the board, finished runner up. I know it's not the same course. Believe it or not, Siwoo Kim lives in Dallas. He's he's the most Texas of anyone on the PJ Tour. Just look at him. So $9,700 Siwoo Kim. And last year at this event, he gained eight strokes on approach. Clearly, he likes it here. Clearly, something fits his eye. He's not the longest driver on, on the tour, but he's a plus. He's plus in distance and plus in accuracy. I expect him to play out of the fairway. Alex Norman Norin has good course history. He finished fourth, but you're, this is a way overpay for Norin. He's a grinder, and he'll probably finish T11 after doing nothing for the first two days. That's just how Norin rolls. Jason Day, he's sneakily playing me, like mediocre golf, but nothing poorly. Finished 16th and 7th here in his career. I think he's going under the radar because early in 2024, late in 2023, he was playing really good golf. One in Texas last year. I'm down. Okay. I know we talked about Keith Mitchell, but like early on, I, but I do like him this week. What he's doing with his irons is really head turning and really impressive. Like Keith Mitchell for his entire career has been a generational driver, but was always hit or miss with the irons. But he talked about early on in the season, he got with his team and he was like, why am I stroke stain 150 with my on approach every single year? And he talked about how he worked on half shots, worked on like hold off shots, worked on flighted shots on the range when the, the majority of his career, he was just addicted to like hitting stock shots on the range. Okay, here's my full seven iron. Here's my full eight iron. But obviously, if you're a golfer, if you're playing on the PJ Tour, you got to be creative. You got to hit half numbers. You got to hit half shots. And crazy that, that he, he figured that out and immediately is gaining a ton of strokes on approach. That just goes to show how talented of a golfer Keith Mitchell is. I know he gagged it over the weekend, but we don't need him to win at $9,200. And what I like even more is last year in this event, he gained five strokes on approach. And that was before he was hitting his irons well at all. So 
We're getting Keith Mitchell in great tee to green form at a golf course where you need to drive the ball long and straight. He's literally a top five driver on tour. He's playing good golf. I know he had a bad Sunday, but he's playing overall good golf. And maybe people won't go, won't want to go back to him after what they saw on Sunday. So I think Keith, Keith's a hammer. I think we should bet him. So I'm definitely down for Keith at nine at 9,200. Tom Hoagie, 9,000. I think he probably will miss the cut. He's coming off of an event where he lost nine strokes off the tee. I wrote up earlier in the week, you can be the greatest iron player on tour and miss the cut at Memorial Park if you're not hitting the fairways. And he, not that he's going to lose nine strokes here because he lost nine strokes at Sawgrass because there's water everywhere, but like you just can't trust Tom Hoagie losing nine strokes off the tee, and he's never the best driver. He's a great iron player, wedge player. This is not a Tom Hoagie course. Stefan Yeager, back-to-back – no, not back-to-back, not back, sorry. Stefan Yeager off of a missed cut at $8,900. I just love his, his grinding ability. I think he can really just – play good golf. doesn't have to play great. Just, just shoot two under in round one, shoot two under in round two, three on like, just, just grind it out slow, 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 and just find his way T12. So he always garners some ownership, but I don't hate it at 8,900 Bo Hostler. I know he doesn't have the best course history here, but you play Bo Hostler in Texas Two missed cuts here. And he's missed his last two cuts uh, on the PJ tour, but yet he's $8,700. That tells me DraftKings is sharp. That tells me Bo Hostler is in for a good week. Anyone else in the 8K range that kind of fits my eye? I like Kurt K. Kurt K has never played here before, but he's coming off of a 19th place at the Players. And we're not too far removed from Kurt K leading the field in tee to green at Pebble Beach, finishing 8th in Phoenix. And this is a golf course where it rewards the best drivers of the golf ball. And Kurt is a generational driver. If you win at Bay Hill, you could drive your golf ball. And Kurt's playing good golf. He's pr- he's priced below Patrick Rogers, Aaron Rye, Billy Horschel, and Doug Gim. Like, come on. Come on. Kurt at $8,100, absolute hammer. Jake Knapp uh, makes sense. Like, truthfully, he's a long and straight driver, but I just feel like it's too easy for hit, for things to go sideways with him. I don't want to chase it at eight k. I really don't. He's like a $7,700 golfer in this field. So 8 k range, I love Kurt K. I love like Steven Yeager, I love Bo Hostler. So those are my 8K guys. Down to the 7K range, we got Thorbjorn Olsen. Uh, 7K range, hold on. Let me fix my screen real quick. 7K, there we go. Thorbjorn Olsen down to, who is it down to? Vic, Big Dick Vic Perez, when he was chalk last week. So, okay, I will do the Thorbjorn Olsen bit. Uh, there is absolutely zero reason he is... Every single week, the highest price Euro guy. It's because of one thing. It's because he's won on the DP World Tour more recently than anyone else. But uh, for betting DP World Tour uh, last few years, there is no reason that Thorbjorn is just that much higher price than Bobby Mack, that much higher price than Vic Perez, that much higher price than Thomas Dietrich. Call whoever losers. Thorbjorn Olsen is nowhere near as that he, 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 I kids, I'm not saying he's not better, he could be better, but he's not that much of a gap. Like, there, like Thorbjorn last week was 70 80 to one, where Bob Mack was 250 to one. Not that Bob Mack was going to win the golf tournament, Bob Mack made the cut, Thorbjorn missed the cut. Like, that's a it's a coin flip, is what I'm saying. And he's just priced way higher than he ever should be. So, out on Thorbjorn, Thorbjorn, Mac Hughes, if he can find fairways, this is a good golf course for him. He's made three out of three cuts here, 16th, 29th, and 7th, and he's made his last three cuts on the PGA Tour. I think this is another good spot for Mac Hughes. Driver scares me a little bit, but I like his ability to scramble and uh, get away with it. Cam Davis, $7,700. No one is going to play him, but I'm so high on Cam Davis' ceiling, especially on a golf course where the driver is so, so important. Like We're not too far removed from him being the 36 hole leader, almost the 36 hole leader at the Genesis. I know he's been playing. He shot infinity at the players. That's not a Cam Davis golf course. I love this course. And no one, he's going to be 3% owned. I'm so down for Cam Davis on a track like this. Why is Ben Griffin $7,600? You don't play Ben Griffin on long golf courses. You play him on Bermuda only. Crazy price. T Moore, he's missed both cuts here. And this is one of the few courses where T Moore like hasn't done anything okay but he's made every single cut wait i have it written down taylor moore has made every cut 13 straight cuts truthfully he's made 13 straight cuts but he's missed his only two cuts here something's got to give i think taylor moore is 
with the PGA Tour being so diluted, he can take that next step. $7,600, sure. Hell yeah. Um, Akshay Batia, I absolutely love. He's now gained ball striking in two or three straight starts. And this is a golf course that rewards great ball striking. He's generally a plus in distance, plus in accuracy, and a great middle long iron player. Uh, just Akshay pounding greens, two putting, making birdie every five holes, six holes. Fine. That will work. You Just slow and steady will get the job done around Memorial Park. I love him. I don't know why Luke List is $7,500 and Doug Kim and Billy Horschel are $8,300. That is a blatant misprice. Luke List is a ball striker, just a generational ball striker. He does his best work on the West Coast, I believe. But um, this is a course where you got to be plus in distance, got to be plus with your irons, long irons. And Luke List is surely that. I'm sure he'll garner some ownership at 75, but this 7K range is literally better than the 8K range, which is interesting to point. Uh, anyone else in the 7K range I'm bullish on? I don't like KH Lee. No, we're chasing something from last week, and it was all a short game. Thomas Dietrich hitting his driver well, which is all you need. Like play out of the fairway and you will do well here. He is a liability with the irons, but I'm the the key is the key is driver here. So I like Tommy Deeds at seventy four hundred dollar. Down for a Ryan Fox bounce back after two straight mix miss cuts. He's a plus driver, which is big. Um, Victor Perez seven K min. He was giga chalk last week. I know I get why because he was coming off of a good result in Puerto Rico, a good result at uh the Cognizant. But Victor Perez should never be chalk on the PGA Tour. Getting a little kickback now. He's still 7K. I don't love that because he was like 55 at Cognizant when we were. If you follow my show, we were definitely on him, and he definitely made you money. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of out on that. My favorite guys in the 7K range right now have got to be Liss, Batia, Taylor Moore, Matt Hughes. All right, let's do the 6K range. We'll touch on it quickly before we – Get out of here, and I don't want to go too deep in the 6K range because I will deep dive, deep dive that for Wednesday, but we can go through it. Bob Mack, $6,800. He's making cuts, which is huge. I like Bob Mack to you, – you, you play Bob Mack in difficult conditions. It's as simple as that. Uh, he's made three out of his last four cuts, never played here before, but he is one of the better drivers in this upper 6K range. Another good driver in the 6K range is – where's Cam Champ? $6,400 Cam Champ. Damn, there's not many Cam Champ golf courses, but I think this could be one of them. He missed the cut here last year, but he's going to play out of the fairway. He's going to be long and straight off the tee. Um, 6K range. Look, <laughs> Taylor Pendrith, when he makes sense, never fares well, and he somewhat makes sense this week. He's a, usually a plush driver of the golf ball. But like I said, Taylor Pendrith, when he makes sense, is not a good play. I do like Justin Suh. Finished 33rd at the Valspar last week. Made the cut last year. And his build is driver, putter, long and straight off the tee. Can heat up with the putter. And the irons have been hit or miss. Like It's been every start. It's like gaining strokes, losing strokes, gaining strokes. The, the, the fact that he has the iron upside, whereas last year he was just losing strokes every single week, makes me feel like we're not far from another Justin Suh flash because he flashed at the Zozo. He flashed a few times in the fall. Definitely down for some uh, 62. I do like Chris Goddard up. Chris Goddard up shot a 69 or 68 in round one of the Valspar and then kind of faded, made the cut, but this is definitely another Chris Goddard up golf course. You want to play him in minus 12 to minus 15 conditions. You want to play him when driving is super important, and that's what we have here. So definitely down for Chris Goddard up at $6,100. And then going down to this 5K range, I like Johnny Vegas. Johnny Vegas is $5,600. Made the cut here in 2021 and 2020, and he, when you there's a few there's few Johnny Vegas golf courses. You play Johnny Vegas when driving is important, and this is a go golf course where he could just unload the driver and go from there. He's iron play putter hit or miss, but he checks the most important box, which is driving. So one more ad, and then we'll get the one more play. I think could be a sneaky one that you guys are going to want to hear. Finally, Hall of Fame bets. Win bigger by betting smarter this NBA season with Hall of Fame bets. 
sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every NBA and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Enter any parlay into Hall of Fame bets parlay optimizer tool and get hit rates broken down by leg, as well as expected probability for the entire parlay. Sort all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot and which players are not and which players have value. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame bets to craft more intelligent, data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame Bets. Okay, finally, $5,400, $5,300, so I'm sorry. Alejandro Toasty. Over the last 36 rounds, this guy is number six in strokes gain off the tee. Made the cut at the Valspar. Never played here before. But the only thing we know about Toasty is he is an absolute missile bomber off the tee. That is, like I said, to lead the show off, that is the sole most important thing. So $5,600. He made the cut on a difficult golf course. I know he shot infinity over the weekend. But making the cut is paramount. We want that 66 lineup. And Toasty is a guy... Who could do that? You know who's number four and off the tee the last 36 rounds? John Vegas, and I just mentioned him. So those are two 5K hammers I think you should get after. So, um, yeah, any questions, you know where to find me. ton more content this week from me and the entire Golf Gambling Podcast team. Let's do it this week. Let's do it this week. I'll catch you guys Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. Peace.